Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're going to let everyone connect to the webinar and then we will get started momentarily. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. We'll be starting in just a minute, giving everyone time to connect to webinar. And then we'll be able to get started soon. Just as a, an FYI, I will post a few things in the chat for you um, if you want to bookmark them for later. Um, but the primary presentation will be um, Victoria speaking, but we'll get started in just a second. I think we're good to start now. Um, so hi, everyone. Welcome to Commuting to Stony Brook, your Stony Brook Roadmap. I'm Amanda Mills, Assistant Director of Admissions, and we're very happy to have our special guest speaker today, Victoria Hughes, who's the Coordinator of Commuter Services and Off-Campus Living in the Department of Student Community Development, which is part of the Office of Student Life at Stony Brook, which is a big part of your time at Stony Brook. Um, and following the presentation, we're going to have a lot of time for your questions. You'll be able to use the Q&A feature for webinar to ask questions that you have, and we'll get to those shortly. Um, and just as a general um, guideline, while we don't have a presentation today about general admission requirements. If you do have a couple of questions, you can put those in the Q&A as well. And Brian from admissions will answer those for you behind the scenes. And if you had, haven't had an opportunity to do so, or if you'd like clarification on the admission process, please join us for one of our live virtual information sessions where a counselor and a current student will review the application process, deadlines and policies, as well as provide details about student life, living on campus, student support services. And I'll again, post some uh, things for you to bookmark for later in the chat. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be available in the next few days on the Undergraduate Admissions YouTube page for Stony Brook. There's also lots of other previously recorded sessions. So if you missed one or there's one coming up that you can't attend, you can always look for it on Stony Brook Admissions YouTube. Um, now, please join me in welcoming Victoria. Hi, everybody. Good evening, afternoon. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, my name is Vic. I'm the coordinator for Commuter Student Services and Off-Campus Living. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for that introduction. Um, so today I'm going to give you an overview of our department, um, who we are, what we do, um, and all the support services that we have to offer you. Um, so Amanda, if you could just click to the next slide for me. All right, awesome. Uh, okay, so we'll start out by just kind of defining commuter students. What is a commuter student? Um, so really by default, anyone who does not live on campus is kind of automatically considered to be a commuter. Um, so whether you're living at home with your family and you're coming into campus from there, or maybe you're renting in the local area, um, or you know something to that effect, um, you are considered to be a commuter student, whether you take the train or the bus or a car, or you walk here or you bike here, et cetera, you're considered a commuter student. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so yeah, the, our commuter student population is uh, very diverse. It's a very large population. Um, it's just about an even 50-50 split between um, undergraduate resident students and commuter students on this campus. Um, so 50% of our undergrad population is comprised of commuters. It is a very large group. Um, Commuter, stu commuter students are uh, very engaged in academics and extracurriculars um, and, you know, things of that nature um, equal to their resident uh, peers. Um, they're very involved. They're very invested um, in their um, campus involvement and, and all of that. Um, it's a very diverse community, as I said, um, a lot of different backgrounds and life circumstances. Um, we have a lot of different groups of folks who are considered to be commuter students. A lot of non-traditional students tend to be commuters. Um, so there's a really good mix of people there. Um, and our job as a department is to make you all feel seen and supported and to provide supportive programming for you guys to uh, really enrich your time here at Stony Brook. You can go ahead. 
Okay. Um, all right. So this is our department's mission statement. I'll very quickly go through that for you, just so you kind of know what our uh, prerogative is and what we're all about. Um, so commuter student services and off-campus living is committed to offering support, programming, resources, and outreach targeted towards students who do not reside on campus. We orient commuter students to Stony Brook University and the local community and provide them with the tools they need to be successful both on and off campus. We seek to help you, the commuter student, become an active participant in campus life so that your experience at Stony Brook is truly satisfying and enriching. Next slide. Awesome, thank you. Um, so yeah, we have a, a pretty wide variety of programming uh, that we do in, in this department. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. This is just some of the things that we have done and continue to do throughout the years. Um, our most popular event remains uh, the drive-in movie. We do that twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. Um, we do have one coming up um, this spring semester. We haven't officially announced it yet, uh, but you can keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, it's a really cool event. Lots of people from the local community come in, students, they bring their family, friends. Um, everybody's welcome to join us. Uh, so it's, it's been a really fun event over the years. Um, we also do have something called Commuter Appreciation Month, which happens twice a year as well, once in the fall, once in the spring. Um, and those months are dedicated to bolstering our programming um, that is targeted towards commuter students um, and really just showing our appreciation for the population. Um, we've done a lot of like, chilling social things, uh, you know, Coco's, co cookie, oh my God, cookies and Coco socials. Um, commuter connection is something that happens once a month. Um, we've been trying to uh, try a lot of new things with the commuter connections, um, lots of different food that we serve there. Um, it's mostly a, a food event, um, who doesn't like free food, uh, but it's a chance for, you know, students to kind of get together and socialize and talk to us as a department, get to know us, um, talk to our commuter assistants, which I will discuss uh, in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we serve food at those events. It happens once a month and it's a really fun time. Uh, we've done trivia nights. We do a lot of off-campus safety initiatives. Uh, we provide a lot of programming with regard to um, living off campus. So if you're looking to rent uh, in the neighboring areas, we have a presentation called Landlords, Leases, and You, which we're actually going to be running a lot next month. Um, so if that's something that you are looking into, I would recommend attending that. And uh, you can go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so that is our Instagram, uh, at SBU Commuters. We try to be very active on social media to connect with you guys. Uh, so if you would like to see what we're up to, uh, take a look at some of the programming that we have, um, see some past events that we've done, uh, you can check us out on Instagram. We do send out some newsletters throughout the semester. Uh, one of them is more geared towards just the general commuter student population. And then we do have another one that is more geared towards the non-traditional student or the adult learner. You can skip to the next. Okay, so off-campus living resources. Uh, we provide resources for folks who are looking to rent off campus, or even if you're already renting off campus, maybe you have some questions about tenant rights, uh, you know, things like that. Um, we try to educate on rental red flags uh, so that folks kind of know what to look out for, especially if you have never rented before. Maybe you don't know what a lease is supposed to look like. You don't know what um, terms are legal or illegal to have in there. You're not really sure what to be looking out for. Um, we provide a lot of education educational resources with regard to that. Um, we do have an off-campus housing portal on our website. Um, that first square there that says view houses and apartments uh, will take you to privately owned homes and apartments in the area. Um, all of those units are legal rental properties, so they've been properly vetted uh, by the town and they have legal permitting in place. Um, so we always recommend that people kind of start their search there. Um, we also have apartment complexes in the area. We have a pretty comprehensive list um, of a lot of different commercial apartment complexes that you can take a look at. Um, and then we also do have a roommate portal. So if you're interested in having a roommate uh, or sharing a home or something like that, um, you can create a profile for yourself and browse through um, the other profiles that students have made and see if there's maybe a connection there. Um, we can also, if you do have some sort of a concern or an issue, if you're renting off campus, you're having a problem with your landlord or something like that, uh, we can refer you out to the uh, campus legal clinic um, so that you can ask legal sorts of questions as well. You can skip to the next. 
Okay, so uh, switching gears a little bit, we're going to get into our peer mentor program called the Commuter Assistant Program. Uh, we do have a video for you guys that kind of will give you an overview of that program and what that's all about. Uh, but in a very broad sense, um, it is a mentorship program uh, where we match up incoming commuter students with more experienced students um, who can kind of help give you the lay of the land, um, help you acclimate to the campus, um, which I know can be very daunting when you're new and kind of don't really know where anything is and you're trying to get connected with resources. Um, so these students uh, are very helpful resource uh, for incoming commuters. Uh, and you can go ahead and play the video. We're here as a CA and we, we are, are commuter, commuter assistants. assistants. The commuter assistant program is made up of student leaders, both incoming freshmen and transfer commuter students acclimate to Stony Brook's campus. Throughout the year, we hold a variety of events that helps you meet with other students mm -hmm. and to learn about campus resources and the surrounding community. Commuter assistants can help you prepare for your upcoming semester at Stony Brook and connect throughout your first year with things that are important to you. From academic resources, involvement opportunities, and also from technology used on campus to smaller things like grabbing a bite or a cup of coffee. One of the greatest things about being a CA is that uh, we're a tight-knit group of student leaders that helps make this large large campus feel small and comfortable for you. Our goal is to show you the ropes and set you up for a fun, productive, and successful experience at the university. Whether you're a transfer student or this is your very first college experience, the opportunities are endless, and this is a fresh start. Let's help you kick things off. Welcome, Welcome to, to Stony Brook. As a new transfer student this last semester, I was feeling super anxious and overwhelmed about being on campus, which is why I decided to sign up for the CA program. My mentor was able to give me helpful tips, like how to use the Maps feature on Navigate and find all campus resources at the Career Center. Um, additionally, they were able to help provide with me with guidance on what clubs and organizations to join based on my major and my personal interests, helping me as a commuter get involved on campus. I'm really appreciative of the program because to help me have such a successful first semester here at Stony Brook, um, and I'm so glad that my manager is my friend now. So having a mentor as a freshman on Stony Brook is extremely helpful in navigating as a freshman. And one of the best things about having a CA is them being a tour on campus, and showing you and also showing you the things to study for me. Um, I think that that's definitely one of the best things about um, being in this program and something that I recommend. So returning non-traditional student away from school for years, participating in the computer system program was a great idea. It helped me to start the semester off with a built-in friend, a friend that could answer any questions I had as they come up, and even answer those I didn't think to ask. I feel like had I not participated in the computer system program, I'd be wandering around campus to this day trying to figure things out. I first got involved with the CA program over the summer coming into my first year of college because I'm an out-of-state commuter. I was matched with my CA and she reached out immediately and we did a Zoom call and she went over important campus resources and we even met up over the summer and she gave me a tour and explained the bus system, which was a great help. And then even over the course of the semester, I knew she was there and available to reach out to if I had any questions or concerns. And she would either reply with a quick message, what they on if I needed it or not. And overall, it's been such a great program that I would strongly encourage you to check it out. Now is the perfect time to request the computer assistant. Just pause the video and scan the QR code, or visit our website and fill out the computer assistant request form. The form will ask for some basic information, and you'll be provided a link to look at our Commuter Assistant video bios. Our video bios will give you a glimpse of who we are and what we're into. We encourage you to choose someone based off similar interests, a common major, or just through our charming personalities. After taking a look at our bios, simply email us your top three choices. Once you submit your top three CA, we'll pair you up right away so we can get the ball rolling. You can go ahead and ask whatever question you want, or get a personalized tour of Tony Brook campus. We want to make sure this becomes your community. So let us help you make the most out of your first year here at Tony Brook. So set yourself up for success and request your CPA today. We are so excited to welcome you to the Seawolf family. And we can't wait to help make Stony Brook your home away from home. So fill out that interest form. Hi, I'm Swan, and I love gaming and string instruments. Hi, my name is Jenny and I like to 
John Michael. Hi guys, my name is Gina. I'm a theater assistant. My hobbies are playing video games, going on a hike, and listening to music. Hi, my name is Peter. I love to play the guitar, and I also have to have my own custom guitar business. And I built this one. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I think it's slide number nine that we were on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll give you just a, a minute if you would like to scan the QR code to uh, request a commuter assistant if you're interested in that service. Um, it's not something that is required of you, uh, but it is something that we highly recommend uh, because it is a really great resource for you guys as incoming commuter students uh, to get paired up with a student leader who's a little bit more experienced who can kind of show you the ropes. Um, they do a lot of personalized campus tours. Um, they can get you connected to campus resources, answer a lot of your questions, etc. Um, so if you'd like, just scan that QR code with your phone, uh, or you can go to tinyurl.com slash CA request SBU. I think we can move to the next slide. The QR code will pop up again at the end of the uh, presentation if you guys didn't get a chance. Um, okay, so parking and transportation. Um, I'm not going to share a ton of information about this because um, we are actually separate departments. Um, folks do get confused sometimes thinking that um, commuter services is um, tied into parking and transportation. Um, it's actually a separate department. It's called Mobility and uh, Parking Services or MAPS for short. Um, so they are an entirely separate branch um, at the university. Um, if you are looking for more information about uh, parking uh, or you're looking for like an updated campus map um, of, of the parking uh, areas, um, any really of the most up-to-date information you're going to find on their website. Um, so whether you're signing up for a parking pass or you're looking for a cost associated with the parking passes, um, you're looking for parking maps, et cetera, um, you would go to stonybrook.edu slash parking. Um, just a small tidbit of information, though, that I can give you. Um, I do know that the faculty and staff parking lots are generally open to the public after 4 p.m. Um, you will see signs outside of those designated areas that say enforced from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, so, sorry, from 7 to 4 p.m backwards. Um, but anyway, so after four o'clock, generally, you are able to park your vehicle there. Um, if you um, are a commuter student, and maybe you want to move your car a little bit closer or to a different area, um, you are able to utilize those parking lots. Um, we do recommend that if you're parked in the farthest commuter lot, which is the one that's highlighted in green on this map, you can see that it's a little ways uh, away from the main campus area. Um, if you are parked there and you're planning on staying on campus past 11 p.m., we do recommend that you utilize that um, and you move your vehicle to one of the faculty staff lots that's more centrally located uh, prior to 11 p.m. because that's when the shuttle buses that go back and forth to that lot stop running for the evening. Um, but anything really related to parking, uh, getting a permit, costs associated with that, um, I will direct you to um, MAPS. Uh, again, their website is stonybrook.edu slash parking. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, and just something to highlight also, um, if you're going to be utilizing the bus system around campus, um, that is included in your tuition. It's not an extra cost to you at all. Um, there is something called the Double Map Bus Tracker. It is an app that you can download for free on any device, uh, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, whatever you got. Um, Double Map Bus Tracker. Um, this is a way for you to keep track of all the different buses on campus, see where they're going, uh, what stops they're hitting, um, et cetera, and kind of see how they're moving in real time. Um, so many folks do find it to be useful as they're kind of learning the bus schedules and things like that. Um, another thing that I do like to highlight is called the Residential Safety Program. Um, this is something that's available to you at all hours of day and night. Um, for instance, if you're on campus um, and you, for whatever reason, don't feel comfortable walking from point A to point B by yourself, maybe you're here very late at night or something like that, um, the Residential Safety Program is available to you if you contact 631-632-WALK, um, a representative from that program in a very bright, uh, stylish, reflective vest will come and meet you wherever you're at, um, and they will escort you from point A to point B if that's something that you uh, would like to utilize. Go ahead. 
So just to briefly touch on the railroad, uh, some people are nervous about taking the train, uh, but a lot of our students actually do utilize the, the train pretty frequently, especially students who are coming in from New York City and the surrounding boroughs. Um, the good thing about it is that the uh, Stony Brook train platform is actually right here on campus. Uh, so it pulls in right to our campus um, and there will generally always be a shuttle bus, a uh, campus shuttle bus uh, at the platform that will come and go every few minutes or so, uh, which you can keep track of on that app that we just discussed. Um, so if you don't want to walk from the train platform to more central areas of campus, you're welcome to utilize those buses. Um, it is walkable to the main campus. Um, it'll probably take you about 15 minutes or so to get from the platform to the center of campus. Uh, but when the weather's bad, you, you may as well just utilize the bus. Um, it is available to you. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people take the train. Um, it is pretty simple to do once you get the hang of it. Um, if you're looking for um, train schedules and train fares and things like that, I would direct you to the Long Island Railroad website. You can kind of plug and play depending on where you're coming from. Um, they have a tool that you can use to plug in where you're coming from and where you're going, which in this case would be Stony Brook. Um, they'll tell you exactly, you know, what time the train is coming and going, um, any uh, transfers that you might need to make. And I think you can find information about the train fare there as well. You can go ahead to the next. So lockers are available to you on campus for storage purposes, if you would like. Um, there are two locations for them. They're uh, in the Melville Library, located in the Commuter Lounge, uh, which has recently been renamed the Pit Stop. Um, it was recently renovated uh, roughly like a year and a half ago, maybe. Um, so it's a fairly newly renovated space um, that you can see in that picture in the lower uh, right-hand corner there. Um, so it's a really uh, vibrant space. Students hang out in there quite frequently. There's a lot of furniture um, in there, a lot of tables and chairs and things. You can uh, sit and study. Um, you know, you can hang out with your friends, eat, whatever you want to do. Um, there's vending machines in there as well. Uh, but there are storage lockers in there for you to utilize. Um, they're also available on the lower level of the Student Activity Center. Um, there is a rental cost associated with the lockers. So if you're looking for more information about how to secure a locker and what the cost is uh, associated with that, go to stonybrook.edu slash FSA for more information. Head. So meal plans, I'm not going to talk too much about. Um, it is pretty in-depth. Um, there are quite a few options to choose from. Um, commuter students are not required to have a meal plan. Um, resident students do have to have them, but for you guys uh, as commuters, it's not something that's required of you. It is something that we recommend, though, if you find yourself on campus frequently. Um, there is a little bit of a discount associated with that um, in terms of dine-in. I think you get something like 10% off at dine-in or something like that. Um, so it can be useful. Um, there are a lot of dining options here on campus. Um, most, if not all of them, uh, will take credit or debit cards. So even if you don't have a meal plan, you're more than welcome to eat on campus um, and just pay with your credit or debit card. Um, there are a lot of different options for meal plans, as I mentioned. Um, I believe that they're kind of tiered um, in a way. So, you know, it, it just really depends on what your needs are. Um, there's a lot of different pricing options. Um, it really just depends on how frequently you're on campus and how much uh, you think you're going to be eating on campus. So some of the plans are more geared towards folks who are here like every single day. Uh, some of the meal plans are more tailored toward people who are here maybe once or twice a week. Um, so it just really depends on what you're looking for. Um, but it is very easy to find online if you would like to browse through the meal plans. Um, you can really just Google Stony Brook commuter meal plans. It's the first search option um, if you would like to take advantage of that. Next slide. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for my spiel here. Um, if you would like to connect with us, our email is right there, commuter underscore services at stonybrook.edu. Our phone number is there. Uh, we are located in the student, student union um, in suite 205. That's on the second floor right next to the elevator. If you would like to check out our website, stonybrook.edu slash commuters. Um, if you want to connect with us on socials, uh, that first QR there is our Instagram at SBU commuters. Uh, we do also have Facebook, although I'll admit we're not as active on the Facebook as we are on Instagram. Um, and I think if you click to the next slide, that QR for the requesting a CA will come up. Yep, right there. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to scan that QR and you would like to request a commuter assistant, you can go ahead and scan that now. Or you can go to tinyurl.com slash CA request SBU. And with that, I will open it up uh, to you guys for questions. I see there's some stuff popping up in the Q&A here. So I'll go ahead and take a look. 
are graduate students able to work with a commuter assistant? So it is uh, specifically geared toward undergraduate students at this time, uh, but if there are specific resources that you need as a graduate student or questions that you have for our department, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we'll direct you uh, in, the, in the best direction that we can. So Victoria, Vic, we get a lot of questions about um, timing of things. Like if I'm taking mm -hmm. classes, mm -hmm. you know, on a, a traditional kind of some, you know, weekly schedule and right. I have breaks in between, um, will I have time to join clubs and organizations or be mm -hmm. involved in the community? Yeah, I mean, that's a question that we get a lot, too. Uh, it's a fair question. Um, I say absolutely, you should go for it. Um, there is something going on pretty much at all hours of the day, every day of the week at Stony Brook. Um, it's pretty impossible not to stumble into something. Um, there are over 350 clubs and organizations at this point. Um, they all meet at different times, uh, different days, different places. Um, so I would just encourage you to kind of look around, uh, get a sense for what your schedule is and for kind of, you know, those times that you have available. Um, and just browse through SB Engaged and Cork. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are, are familiar with that yet, uh, but SB Engaged uh, and Cork essentially are the same thing. It's just that Cork is the um, mobile version. SB Engaged, you can uh, use a desktop. Uh, but essentially, it's a website that we use um, to showcase all of the different stuff that we have going on. Um, all the clubs and orgs um, and every department on campus will post their events there. Um, so anything that you could possibly think of, uh, there's bound to be something uh, for you. Um, over 350 clubs and orgs. Again, um, there's really a little bit of something for everybody. Um, and I think some some uh, areas are still doing virtual events as well. So there's a, a bit of a convenience factor there. Um, but my, my short answer is yes. I think that, that if you kind of get the hang of things and kind of map out your schedule, you should definitely have time to get involved because there's always something going on. Yeah, we had a, a panel with um, some students who were originally from out of state the other night, mm -hmm. and one of the students who's a journalism major is the um, editor-in-chief of the Statesman, commutes to campus, yeah. lived, had, has moved off campus, not to her home in Connecticut, but <laughs> right. uh, to off-campus housing, and um, is very involved, has done internships, and has, mm -hmm. has been able to manage that, and um, another student who actually has graduated and went, you know, to grad school remembered fondly that um, while part of the time she lived on campus and part of the time she lived off campus, all the clubs and organizations, many of them have um, theme food related events. Yeah. So th there were lots of opportunities to eat on campus, even without a meal plan. So I thought that oh, was yeah, a definitely. tidbit to definitely. join clubs and get free food. <laughs> That is absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, as I mentioned, we do have events once a month where we give out quite a bit of free food. Uh, so there's always an, an opportunity there. Um, I see another question popping up in the chat. Um, I see a lot of information on your website, but would you have any more tips for someone doing their first rental search? Um, so yeah, I um, as I mentioned, we do uh, have um, a workshop coming up. Um, do admitted students have access to that or not yet? You would probably be better to, to ask that question too. I'm sorry, to which, to your workshop? So like if they were to, if they were to browse on like SB Engaged or something, could they see that stuff yet or? They, you'll only be able to see it, I believe, if you have your Stony Brook email, right? Okay. So then and in that, that case, so after um, April 15th, students can get their net ID and then they can set up their email. So it's a little early, but within the next month and a half, yeah. they okay. should be able to. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we, we have a presentation coming up that covers like every single tidbit of information that you could possibly need to know about living off campus. Um, if you're interested in attending that, I'd be more than happy to have you. If you want to reach out to us through email, um, I can just send you the, the Zoom information directly. It's, it's virtual, so you should be able to attend. Um, but broad strokes, um, I would say start looking as early as you possibly can. Um, we recommend a minimum of three months in advance because it can be a little bit competitive, um, especially, you know, depending on what other factors you're looking at, like, do you have a car uh, or are you looking for uh, to use public transportation? Um, do you have animals? That's something to consider. Um, are you looking for roommates? Do you want to live alone? What's your budget? Um, so there's 
uh, uh, any number of factors that really contribute uh, to that. But I would say start looking as soon as possible. Um, in terms of like safety, um, absolutely do not <laughs> give anybody any money before you have seen the place uh, and can verify that it actually exists in real life. Um, unfortunately, we've had some students um, come into some scams uh, over the years. Um, it's particularly prevalent on Facebook groups. Um, you know, people will advertise these apartments and they look gorgeous and the price is just right. And it's kind of too good to be true. Um, and then, you know, students end up putting like a deposit down or something without ever really seeing it. And it turns out that that place does not exist. And now you're out, you know, 200 bucks for some fee that you probably isn't even real either. Um, so, you know, stuff like that does exist. Um, I would just caution you to always look at a place first, make sure that it is as advertised. Um, if you're not able to physically be there in person to look at it, I always recommend that you uh, request a virtual tour from the landlord. So like a Zoom or a FaceTime or something like that, something that's happening in real time where you can speak to them and, you know, they can kind of walk around and show you. Uh, you know, what it actually looks like. Um, and if they're unwilling to do those things at the end of the day, then it's probably not what you're wanting to get into. Um, and then my other biggest thing would be absolutely under no circumstances should there ever be cameras inside of your uh, unit. So I don't mean like a, what do you call those things? The little uh, doorbell camera things I'm not talking about on the outside. I'm talking about in your apartment absolutely illegal. Do not ever rent, like run as fast as you can if you come across an apartment with cameras on the inside. Uh, but that would be my, my biggest uh, couple of tips without kind of running through the entire presentation. <laughs> so um, definitely reach out to us through email. I'm more than happy to have you um, sit in on that presentation if you want to learn some more information. And Vic, so we have a question from Samuel, who mm -hmm. I looked him up. He's actually from Nigeria. So he's asking oh, I... about commuting from Maryland, probably because he doesn't realize maybe where we are in New York. Um, okay. Yeah. So I would not recommend, <laughs> I would not recommend commuting from Maryland to Stony Brook on a daily basis. It'll probably take you 10 hours if that, um, or more, I don't know. Um, Maryland is in a different uh, state. So I would say, uh, it, it, maybe you have family there. I don't know what your situation is, uh, but definitely you want to be looking at more local accommodations um, or you want to be looking into on-campus housing if that's something that's available to you. Yes, that's a that's great advice. <laughs> um, what's the furthest that you know of anyone that actually does commute to campus? Um, probably like three hours in one direction like student yeah I, I have a few students who are really committed to the bit at this point <laughs> so they live in you know the city or Jersey or you know some place that takes a lot of trains and buses and you know stuff uh, so yeah students do commute a few hours um, which is miraculous to me I mean I wouldn't do it but you do what you got to do I guess uh, so yeah Yes, I guess there, you know, there comes a time where you make a decision about <laughs> going yeah. to college and that's, uh, but yeah, I would say reasonably maybe finding a place within 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, ideally, but, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But, and know, again, the earlier closer. you start looking, the better. Mm -hmm. um, so one question um, that that we do see come up is, um, a little bit more about dining on campus and yeah. our, so and so this I think is just a misconception like the campus all the dining facilities anyone can go to right it's not like you if you don't have a meal plan you can't get in you would just pay differently mm -hmm. right so everything's right. Very so I think the only exception to that is dine in, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if you can just pay for the food and dine in, but honestly, that's like a fraction of what exists on campus anyway. There are plenty of other locations that you can eat with many, many, many options. There are a lot of retail locations on campus, um, including Dunkin' Donuts, which is very popular. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot that you can eat. And also, um, not for nothing, but there are quite a large selection of food trucks on campus now that you'll find um, in the Student Activity Center Plaza. So even more options there. Um, so there, there's a ton of food on campus that you can pay for with a debit or credit card for sure. 
And are the commuter assistants paid positions? I think I missed that. Um, no, it is a volunteer position. We actually just finished our recruitment cycle and are now going through the almost 90 applications that we received. So we're uh, in the process of establishing a new cohort for the upcoming year. Looks like we have, um, Sam had another question. If um, he paid for the on-campus housing mm -hmm. payment um, and later I decided I wanted to live off campus, would I be refunded? And that's a great question. So up until May 15th, which is the deposit deadline, deposits for campus housing are refunded at 100%. After that, there's a sliding scale of refund. So I would you make sure that if you are going to deposit before May 15th, which is this year's deposit or commitment date, that if you you would try to find out if you're going to be living on campus or not before May 15th, so you could request the full yep. refund. Um, does that happen a lot that you know of that students? Um, I mean, students, for one reason or another, tend to be kind of eager to live off campus. And I, I get it. You know, you want to be independent. You're, you know, you're in college, you're an adult now. And I, I understand that. Uh, but I always say, you know, secure campus housing if you're able to. It really is a privilege uh, to have that. Um, and it is very much more convenient. Um, there are a lot of factors involved with living off campus uh, that can be really overwhelming if you're just starting out. Um, and that's not to say that you can never take that opportunity, you know, by all means, you know, do whatever makes you happy. Uh, but, you know, I, I always do recommend that new students who are brand new to the campus, um, utilize that campus housing if you're able to. And I'm just going to post, um, we have <laughs> Um, a session coming up about living on campus, a virtual session, April 11th. So I posted the link to that if anyone wants to get kind of the other perspective, if you're torn about whether to live on campus or not. Um, and another really good point that we do see is that if you decide to live on campus your first year, you could always decide your second year that you don't want to live on campus anymore. Right. So you're not, you know, it's just a one year commitment. It's not like you'd have to live on campus for four years. Um, right. uh, but, you know, yep. it is it is something for first year and transfer students to really Definitely. consider. Um, yeah. Those you know, are yeah. Take advantage yeah. of that because, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to get to understand the community, not even just the university, but there's a whole community surrounding the university. Uh, so, you know, give yourself that time, get to know the market, get to understand the area, understand how the public transportation works if you don't have a vehicle, uh, you know, things of that nature. So again, I, I always do say, you know, take that campus housing if it is available to you, and then you can always try something new, you know, after that first year. Excellent. Well, we had some great questions. Um, I learned a lot about commuter <laughs> services because I feel like we have so we have usually about thirty five to thirty seven hundred incoming first year students, and the majority, like over seventy seven percent, right. live on campus. So that's kind of the more common, um, right. you know, discussion that we're having in admissions. So this was very helpful for me, Good. and I'm sure for our guests. Thank you so much, Vic. Thank you, Brian. No, of questions behind the scenes. Uh, thank everyone for attending. Next time I will download the video before playing it. I saw that option <laughs> after I already played the video, but that probably would have made it a little bit smoother. Um, but we'll clean okay. that up for you when we um, when we send out the recording on the admissions YouTube page. But thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And oh, we have, oh, now everyone's asking <laughs> one more question. So um, if I live off campus, uh, let me see. If yeah, I so yeah, we, we, I think we just answered that. Um, so okay. yeah, as we said, um, it, you're not making like a four year commitment to campus housing. It's just the, the one year um, if you do, you know, deposit and decide to live on campus. Um, so after that, I mean, if you want to renew your campus housing, you renew. If you want to explore other options, you explore other options. 
Um, and to answer the second question, no, technically you're not required to live on campus. It's just something that we do strongly recommend, especially if you don't really understand the uh, housing market in this area. Um, you're not familiar with um, you know, the pricing. You're not familiar with the area. Um, if you don't have a car, that makes things much more difficult for you. Um, so you know, there, there's a ton of factors to consider. And um, as I mentioned, we do have a pretty in-depth presentation that we're going to be running throughout the month of April. Um, so any of you guys who are interested in hearing more about that, um, highly recommend that you reach out to us through email. I'm more than happy to send you the uh, login information directly. Perfect. Well, thank you so much again, and we will see you on or off campus, whatever you decide to do. <laughs> Good night. Right. Thanks, Vic. Good night. No Bye. problem.